Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said his troops had no immediate plans to leave Russia's border Kursk region that they entered on August 6. Ukraine will hold the territory as it is integral to his victory plan to end the war, Zelensky said. For now, we need it, he stressed. Our operation is aimed to restore our territorial integrity. We capture Russian troops to replace them with the Ukrainians. The same attitude is to the territories. We don't need their land, Zelensky said in an exclusive interview with US NBC News Channel this week. That's something we posited shortly after the operation was launched that might be a major goal, he explained. The operation in the Kursk region will last as long as it takes to win the war, the Ukrainian leader explained. Zelensky said one of the goals of the Kursk operation was to force Moscow to pull troops from across the 600-mile front line in Ukraine, in particular in the east. And while he said Russia has diverted 60,000 troops to Kursk from Ukraine, Pokrovsk has not seen a big drop. The Ukrainian leader stressed that Kiev does not seek to seize Russian territory, and the operation in Kursk does not mean an exchange of territory. Ukraine's victory plan is aimed at forcing Russia to end the war, he stressed. Zelensky noted that Putin doesn't care about the fate of Kursk or Donbass and his only goal is to continue the invasion of Ukraine. Furthermore, the Ukrainian leader revealed that the lack of long-range weapons forced Kiev to search for alternatives, which led to the start of the operation. Touching upon Ukraine's military stock, Zelensky revealed that the ratio of weapons has improved. Previously it was 1-12 in favor of Russia, after the Kursk operation it became 1-3. Zelensky revealed that the surprise incursion into Kursk region was sparked by Ukrainian intelligence reports that Russia was looking to set up a buffer zone near the Sumy and Chernihiv regions furthermore, Zelensky confirmed Pentagon reports on August 7 that he had not informed Washington about the imminent attack on Kursk region. We didn't inform anybody. And this is not the question of distrust, Zelensky stated. He explained that the reason why the operation in Kursk was successful is that he shrunk to the maximum the circle of people who knew about this operation. The Ukrainian leader reminded that Kiev's counteroffensive last summer failed in many ways because of how much it was advertised and talked about, which gave Russians a chance to prepare. The Ukrainian leader refused to answer the question whether his forces would capture more Russian territories, however, added that the Kursk operation was part of the plan. Ukraine's incursion into Kursk region was the largest scale attack on Russian territory since World War II. Once Kiev receives weapons from Berlin, it can do with them as it pleases, an official at the Germany embassy in Russia told Izvesha media outlet. The embassy worker clarified that Germany puts no restrictions on Ukraine using these weapons for strikes inside Russia either. Thus, they have aligned themselves with the United Kingdom and France, who previously also said that they did not oppose Kiev striking targets in Russia. Meanwhile, German politicians have been hot and cold about the Ukrainian army's operations amid Kiev's aggression against Russia's borderline Kursk region, said Artyom Sokolov, a researcher with the European Studies Institute at Moscow State Institute of International Relations. If you look at the overall tone of the German leadership's statements about what is going on in the Kursk region, it suggests that they are distancing themselves from these developments, the expert said. He pointed out that both German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock had limited themselves to token statements reiterating general support for Kiev. In the meantime, discussions continue about providing Kiev with German-made Taurus long-range missiles. Talks on the matter have been ongoing almost since the start of the conflict, but there is still no progress to speak of. The situation on the front line isn't looking good for the Ukrainian armed forces, so the Kiev authorities are hoping to largely shift the attention of the Western public and their own people to some symbolic successes, such as strikes against Russian targets with Western-made long-range weapons, Sokolov noted. One by one, EU countries have come out in support of the Ukrainian army attacking targets inside Russia. Now this seems to be the united positions of NATO. The bloc's member states have crossed all red lines in this regard and things are heading towards an escalation of violence. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is somehow managing to drag NATO into a confrontation with Russia step by step, German political scientist Alexander Rahr told the newspaper. However, members of the collective West still don't have a common vision. 
Washington is not yet ready to give an unequivocal answer to the Kiev administration's requests, largely due to the upcoming U.S. presidential election. And Europe also remains divided on the issue, 